So for more on this, let's bring in Dr. Nicole Sapphire. Um, here's a Here's a statement uh, about this and the numbers. It says, at this pace, 6 million Americans will have been vaccinated by the end of January. And at that point, the first doses will expire, even when kept in the complicated deep freezing system required for the Pfizer vaccine. And that means that millions and millions of crucial doses of vaccine are going to go to waste. Now, that's kind of infuriating. What do you think the problem is? Well, absolutely, Dana. I mean, right now we have about 500,000 Americans being vaccinated, and yet our supply, we, we are shipping out several million vaccines every single day. So while we're stockpiling all of these vaccines, they're not actually being distributed. So therefore, they're going to be sitting in those freezers. And there is a shelf life on that. They cannot stay in those freezers over a certain amount of time. So what it has to happen right now are the states really need to ramp up. They need to, they need to elicit the private sector a lot more. Right now, they haven't been doing that. They started out by only giving it to certain hospital systems, and then they gave very tight restrictions on who was actually allowed to be vaccinated. So all of a sudden, it turned into this very complex distribution process when really it should have been all hands on deck. We give it to the hospitals. We get the pharmacies, the private sector involved. We do these pop-up sites, and anybody and everybody who wants a vaccine should be able to get one right now. I'll tell you, in New York City, Dana, about two, there have been two pop-up centers in the last 24 hours, and people were being turned away because they didn't have an appointment, yet people were lined up for hours. And Governor Cuomo said that he's identified uh, over a thousand thousand sites for these pop-up centers. They should have been mobilized last month. I don't understand right. why they're only now being looked at. They haven't even been opened yet, Dana. It's, it's very frustrating. And, you know, I, there's so many people that want to get it so they, they can get back to work, get back to their lives and travel. I also wanted to ask you about this because there is some concern, I understand, that excessive alcohol might actually affect the effectiveness of the vaccine. What do we need to know? Well, Dana, we know that chronic alcoholism is absolutely an immunosuppressant. And even in mouse studies, it shows in alcoholics, the flu vaccine may be less effective. So chronic alcohol, but chronic alcoholism is very different than moderate to binge drinking alcohol. Um, there's a BBC documentary that's being aired, I believe, tomorrow, where you had a researcher who checked white blood cells, that that makes the antibodies, before and after drinking three glasses of Prosecco. And the results showed that there was about a 50 percent decrease in the number of those circulating white cells um, after the three glasses of Prosecco. Now, that being said, Dana, we don't know by, by any stretch of the imagination if having an, a three glasses of Prosecco is going to decrease the efficacy of the vaccines. Likely not. But I can tell you, chronic alcohol use, binge drinking, absolutely will have an effect on immune system. Not only may it kind of thwart some of the efforts of the vaccines, but it also will make you more susceptible to infection, specifically pneumonia. So you really want to yeah. watch that alcohol intake, especially as we have seen a rise in the frequency of drinking throughout the course of this pandemic. Right. I'm just thinking of Greg Gutfeld give, teasing me about three glasses of Prosecco. I'm sure I'll probably hear about it on the five. Dr. Sapphire, <laughs> thank I'm you. I'm sure Take you care. will.